So, continuing from the last lecture, we were talking of network and probably you got a good idea of how the receptive field increases from a small stimulus by that time it reaches the, uh, the brain things have already changed and that feedbacks and all. So, this is a like a, a functional framework just to broadly understand. There is a sensory input here vision I told you about the when we were talking about why cell neurons are different the receptors are different hearing because they have to catch different type of energy transfer touch. So, sensory buffers right these are sensory buffers are what your sense organs. So, what happens this is a perceptual memory what you have seen top down voluntary attention this is a functional framework. Okay. So, there what happens is there is a storage, there is a verbal rehearsal, there is a visual spatial sketch pad, it goes to a central executive, central executive decides on action planning and there is a response output. So, mechanical energy comes in the form of a touch, your brain finally goes through all electrochemical activity what I was telling you. You respond, your movement probably is one energy cycle completes broadly it does not happen I am just giving an idea, but what happens if there is no response output, what happens if what comes in goes to thought. So, this conversion of mechanical to electrochemical to again mechanical wonderful linear, what happens to mechanical electrochemical and thought. big questions we do not know. Now, you see this word visual special sketch pad there is when you talk of language or a speech when you are talking if you observe it carefully I tell you anything I say pen and you think about the pen in your mind you know what two processes are happening one is P E N, it will always get formed in your brain and if you are speaking pen, then there is a oral sketch pad. So, there is a visual sketch pad which is even where I will be speaking, I said speaking, but my mind has already spelled as P E A K I N G. So, when I am talking there is a oral output which is a sort of audio sketch pad, but simultaneously there is a visual sketch pad which is also getting activated. Normally, we do not realize because we are so lost in speaking that you it is very difficult to dissociate your mind into two speech and all, but this, there is a thing when I am saying there T H E E R E is happening in my mind. Probably this is the problem of network which happens in dyslexia, lot of dyslexic kids will write what they are speaking. So, maybe the when they are learning the pattern of that spelling has not formed. Now, where are these spelling? I will stop here for a minute. It has appears very rosy, but it is not so rosy and this is where quantum physics and rest of the things have stepped in. Non-linear we know that okay, fine the lot of inputs happen, the, the processing unit can take all the data and create another dimension that is fine. There is a lot of non-linear process which happens in the mesoscopic scale, but people have talked of quantum processes in the brain both at the level of microscopic tubules and at a higher level. The higher level the problem is that the scale time scale is in milliseconds 10 to the power minus 3. Quantum processes happen at 10 to the power minus 12 minus 15 that gap of 10 to the power 6 to the 10 to the power 8 is still we do not know, but still it is a very very alluring thing because what we cannot explain is that when stimulus is going in 
all the nerves carry discrete information and the cross connections between neurons are not there. So, these are neurons discrete information carrying feature extraction, they are not cross connected, they are only connected through network. So, this discrete information again combines to form a unitary image, that is one thing which we do not know. So, this whole network thing does not explain this. Second, if there is a definite number, a definite station for every set of information, then the brain will reach saturation and ceiling very soon. Although, if you calculate it even if 14, 20, 15 percent of brain is utilized, still it can store billions of information, but theoretically and the third thing which is very important is again that associative learning thing. Once a stimulus has gone in, it has formed certain memory stuff, that same stimulus is never presented in the same discrete way, it is never so clear, but it still stimulates the same energy. And the fourth thing, the rate of transmission is in milliseconds at least. So, milliseconds 0 0.5 to 120 meters as, as I told you in exons, this can still explain the physical part of it that you see and you act, you listen and you act. What about your thought? As I told you, if I ask you to think, you can immediately close your eyes and think about your grandmother sitting in the village. But if I ask you to send a signal, get it reflected from her face, it will take a lot of time, speed of light. Thoughts, what is it that is carrying thoughts? Is it a quantum field? We do not know, we really do not know. So, that is the big problems which, which happen when we start talking about uh, uh, and that is a lot of new physics has come in. What, what has come in? The lot of new physics about quantum and so these questions which arise while we are translating our understanding from the neuronal level to the behavioral level, which is now that a, a new whole new branch called translational neurosciences has come up, translating from the lab to behavior they are trying to connect all this, but still there are huge gaps because as I said the hard problems are there. This is just a comparative parallelism brain behavior relationship across uh, species. A lot of slides which may sound out of place, but they will all add up to it. I told you about the neuronal, uh, so take an example, take an example of this learning in fear. You see this crab or is it a spider? Okay. You go, it goes through the eyes image, it goes through the sensory cortex, there is an area called amygdala, which always gets stimulated at the prospect of fear or threat to it. And so, this is the, this is the whole imagery. So, there is an emotional behavior which comes up, there is an autonomic response of controlling your sweat, your pupillary dilatation like by sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system or your tummy going into more action or sweating or you are trembling. There is a hormonal response by cortisol or so stress hormones may go up. This is a type of brain activity. So, gray area, hypothalamus, bed nucleus, sense organ, thalamus, everything has got activated. So, one simple response of some dangerous thing like a crab coming to you evokes not only a visual image, it evokes your amygdala which gets ready for a response, your hormones, your emotional behavior and what is your emotional behavior? If you must have heard of fight or flight. This is a psychological theory of emotions. Now, when it comes to emotions, whether you feel a bodily sensation first and then you feel emotional or you feel emotional and then you feel bodily sensations or something happens to your body 
you feel emotional and there is nothing called fear, it is your thinking which makes it fearful. There are all sorts of theory are there, right from James, Ashton Singer, Cannon Bard and but the debate is like this, that bodily changes happen, you feel emotion or you feel emotional that is why bodily changes happen or basically you are having some, some feeling and you give a cognitive appraisal to it and then you feel still not resolved, some understanding. So, this is the associative learning I was to Hopfield network and Hebbian like I blink, you how, how, how do why do you blink? Because the stimulus goes in and it goes like this. So, that is the stimulus which is conditioned, it's famous Pavlov thing associative learning, a dog would salivate even at the bell, that was associative. This is a Philip which people get which a uh, lot of behaviorists people call it. Papet's circuitry is the circuit, this is a circuit neocortex which is a higher thinking, okay. Singulate coirus, nucleus thalamus, again thalamus, hypothalamus, hypothalamus. This is the circuit where this emotional firing goes on and this is where learning also goes on. Papet's circuit if it gets destroyed, your immediate learning and emotional learning will go on. So, learning does not always go on with lot of thinking, what do you, so lot of your thinking which goes on into your network is also emotionally colored, because this circuit cingulate gyrus hippocampus is the place where learning happens, this is where reverberation repeated firing makes the whole thing get into more stable type of learning but it is always colored with emotional expressions and emotional coloring. So, this is the essentially the limbic emotional circuit. If you remember I talked to you about Fennes gauge in the initially, how his personality changed. So, we still find, so the whole debate is whether this deeper area of brain is totally responsible and the higher thinking brain is not colored by emotion, but we are sure it is not so. because when this person was damaged with the tamping rod which went in, he showed changes in sexual behavior and social behavior, lot of which is not always cognition and well thought of and damage was in the frontal lobe. That was a probably a sign, we still find people who have depressed some MRI and EEG changes in the, in the brain. So, hypofunctionality or lesion of orbitofrontal cortex affect emotion. So, this thinking that the emotional brain is deep inside and the thinking brain, the cortical brain which make decisions, abstract judgment, it is not involved in it, it is not always true. There is an underactive orbitofrontal cortex and this affects emotion. How do we know it? We know it in the people who have had damage to the brain and by studying rats. I told you it is the same answer. So, auditory cortex, auditory thalamus, medial prefrontal cortex, hippocampus and this is the amygdala and you know what happens? In a frightful situation you freeze, your blood pressure changes, your stress hormones change and startle reflex. If you are going in a dark and suddenly somebody comes or somebody sitting suddenly go and touch, they will go. All kids have, when they are newborn kids, you know, touch them suddenly they will do this. That is a startle reflex which is a primitive reflex. When you are born, there are lot of primitive reflex. One is a like a grasp reflex or you put something, you are always rooting reflex. All these reflexes are covered when the brain matures. So, you normally do not have it, but in situation of fear, you go back to startle reflex. When old people, when the brain is shrinking in dementia, lot of this frontal things come out, like other something called perseveration comes out. You will ask one question, they will say something. What did you eat? Food. Where did you go? They will keep saying food, 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 because the brain is, why? Because brain actually when it was evolving, it was already firing again and again to learn. 
So that is why you, you find it so difficult. A lot of people will say these kids do not listen, we tell them not to do it, they will keep doing again and again. You know they are not doing it again and again. Their brain is doing it again and again because they find that activity pleasurable. The brain has to keep doing to learn, to make and consolidate that solid knowledge in the brain, so that next time they do not falter. That is what I was telling you about dementia. This is Alzheimer's disease brain which has shrunken and as, as I said the brains grow till 16, 17 years of age in the synapses and then pruning starts and they actually start shrinking right from very early in life. For some people the process is faster. So, if you remember I told you this 4 to 7 hertz riding over, so this is the type of stuff it happens. So, suppose you they take these letters, memories of letters stored in groups of pyramidal cells fire in synchrony for example. One letter refresh each gamma cycle, so this is the gamma cycle like 30, 40 hertz right and these are like 4 to 7 hertz see 4 to 7 approximately. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, these sets of 7 things are almost integrated. So, each gamma cycle, this is a possible type of encoding which is going on and this responds to the cell pyramidal cells in hippocampus. So, every time this cycle comes in a recall they will keep firing. So, this is the blending of gamma and theta oscillations. So, this is representation of how possibly model could uh, be working. Like see the reaction time as it shows in a scanning task increases as the size of memory set increases. So, they may have if there is one word or two words you can recognize it faster as the number of the size of memory set increases the reaction time to give a single letter increases because the brain would be scanning that set to recognize one. But the interesting part is it is said in popular psychology and popular literature that uh, the brain stores memory in chunks of 4 to 7 or 7 and the theta range is 4 to 7. So, is it possible that each spike corresponds to a letter or one feature of that memory. But taking it further, it is not about electrical activity. The chemical switching again steps in. There is something called long term potentiation and long term depression. Potentiation potentiates the synaptic formation and the increases the possibility of long term storage whereas, depression inhibits it and leads to extinction of this thing and the neurochemical which is held responsible is glutamate through its NMDA and AMPA receptors. Maximally present in hippocampus, this is a hippocampus area CA1 and all. So, this pre synaptic post synaptic firing through Hebbian learning mediated through glutamate gets excited and this long term potentiation means reverberating circuits with help of calcium and glutamate leads to synaptic changes and that is how a long term memory is formed. This is how it is in, this is electron microscopy of synapses before and after undergoing LTP. Hippocampal neurons showing increase in calcium also showed doubling of spines. So, this is before long term potentiation and this is after it. So, there is a definite change in the shape if you see it and once it is done, it is done. There is a long term memory. These are the synaptic changes that could support memory before learning. See it exon terminal, dendritic spine. So, the changes in synapses are actually what is happening is that the tree of dendrites which you saw, the way they connect with each other. So, there is a PSP post synaptic potential and see there is a chemical secretion here right. So, what happens after learning? More chemical secreted, more chemical, 
then more sensitive the post as as the chemical comes in. So, there are larger post and presynaptic areas. So, this is before learning and this is a new synapses which are formed, because the more chemicals are secreted, so more area is required to teach them. So, more area unfolding goes on, this is how synaptic changes. So, as I said I told you about the theta rhythms, so and all this is mediated through chemical gating. glutamate and GABA which is the inhibitory part. So, if GABA is more active long term depression will happen, glutamate with calcium. So, theta how do you re retrieve? In CA 3 area of hippocampus through Hebbian thing, this synapses are formed through CA 1 recall may happen, because CA has a feedback system through which almost has a triggering points or a copy of the, the memory, but these things which you see the spikes. So, may coordinate medial temporal lobe which is hippocampus and the prefrontal lobe which is a thinking brain. So, the activity between these two helps in recall at 50 milliseconds at 120 milliseconds. 100 to 200 milliseconds. Now, if you translate this into behavior, what type of memories do you see? A declarative memory and non declarative memory. Declarative memory is like more or less a personal type of thing, your episodes in life, the meanings of the things which you have actually incorporated in your brain system. Procedural learning, skill learning which is a deeper part of basal ganglia which I told you and cerebellum which. Uh, so, there are lot of uh, imprinting and lot of uh, motor movements everything has gone through this priming and classical conditioning as we have talked about. Now, almost connected to memory and when we are talking about the visual sketch pad and the auditory sketch pad while you are speaking. So, the big question comes what is thought? action you know is thought language, do animals think or there is something called thinking in pictures, how do artists sing, they draw, how do musicians sing, not the lyricist, but somebody who creates music, how is their mind creating music, is that thought or is it different, music is different from thought, painting is different from thought visualizing is different from the, or they are just ways of thought. And also as one of my friend just reminded me is that thought also we do not know what we cannot show thought in a concrete way, but thought changes your mood. So, this whole question whether that the limbic area which controls emotion and the thinking area does not control. So, we talked about Fenes Gage when I said that he got an injury in frontal cortex and he developed sexual behavior and emotional lability and all. So, damage to this lateral part of the brain, this lateral part of the brain, this part causes a different personality and if there is a damage to the internal part of frontal brain, there is a different personality which are called pseudo sociopathic, which is like antisocial personality and a pseudo depressive is like depression. In depression there are changes in metabolism in frontal lobe which and depression essentially is a mood disorder. In mania, so it is said if somebody has a stroke, a cerebrovascular accident blood supply is hampered, the more nearer to it to the frontal lobe on the left side it is the more severe the depression is. So, if you have on the left side that means what happens is the left side suppressed and the right side comes up or if the right side is damaged then there is a depression on the left side or mania. So, we do not know. So, is it that on the left side if there is a lesion, there is a depression that means the right side is overactive. I am just throwing a question, but if it happens on the right side then the mania comes out, you become disinhibited 
So, is the right side controlling the left side? Is it are they in a reciprocal relationship? So, thought and emotion are still remain the crux of the research, which we do not have really answers to it. We know that there are damages, we shall talk about emotions later also. So, with this memory theory, where does language stand and where does executive function stand? You remember I talked about the Broca's aphasia damage to the frontal area, this is a temporal and this is like a conduction aphasia. They can speak, they can understand, but they cannot do it at the same time. So, they are unified in addition to the attention and working memory, generating ideas, initiating ideas, inhibiting ideas. Lot of cortical function is about inhibition. It means that if the brain damage causes you to be like an animal and you become violent and there is a Kluver Bussi syndrome, as of the temporal lobe bilateral damage, people eat too much, they put everything to the mouth, become sexually active. Some people are not abnormal, but they are still promiscuous, they may be disinhibited. Is there a problem in the frontal network? Is there a problem in the prefrontal of the brain which is not allowing them to function properly? So, the people whom we call sociopath or criminals or impulsive or are they people whose network is faulty? There is a risk, there is a huge risk if we tell all this, because then what will happen to the courts of justice? What will happen to the moral values of the society? What will happen to the control? Because everybody will say, oh my network is faulty, I am not at loss. So, there nobody will own any responsibilities. So, for just for this reason, we still do not function at the network level, because over that basic network of being like a animal like or having a basic instinct, it has layers conditioned by society, where value system, where morality, where guilt. So, these are not abstract terms, they are incorporated into your basic higher networks. So, whatever your basic instinctual network throws, your higher networks, your emotion, your safety net, your evaluation of the of the current situation makes you decide what you want to do socially, because you have to survive in the society, because of your basic. So, these are all things which go into it. You generate ideas, initiate, innovate, plan, setting goals, regulating and verifying and obviously, temporarily ordering. So, as I was telling you, this is the type of disinhibition which you see in orbitofrontal cortex. So, we will we'll stop at this speech as I already told you, it is a sort of movement only. So, we will stop at this and uh, this is a, again as I said Broca's areas and so, speech is also a motor act essentially, the words are created, they are transmitted to the speech motor area and then you bring it out through your articulatory system. So, essentially it is a oversimplification when I am telling you this, there is a whole huge thing which goes in. We will end at this and then maybe next lecture we will pick up something more about how the brain functions. Thank you.